the controversial Saudi-backed live golf returned for its second season over the weekend, and no one noticed, according to TV ratings. Live began its 2023 season on Friday in Mayacoba, Mexico, marking not only the tour's first event of the season, but also the first under its recently signed television deal with the CW Network. It was an odd choice for the Rebel Golf Tour, but no one could have predicted such bad ratings. In this video, we'll take a closer look at the controversy surrounding this decision and examine the potential impact it could have on the sport of golf as a whole. So grab your clubs and let's tee off into this discussion. The Live Golf Series made its 2023 debut last weekend at Mayacoba in Mexico, airing for the first time on television via the CW Network after previously being available to stream online. The first event of Live's second season was won by Charles Howell III, but it was a major loss for the upstart circuit, as the Saturday and Sunday broadcast drew an average of 289,000 viewers and a .18 household rating. In comparison, the PGA Tour weekend's broadcast on NBC drew over 2 million viewers and an average household rating of 1.24. The XFL, which debuted two weeks ago, had a terrible second week in terms of ratings, with viewership dropping about 50% and 68% from week 2 of the previous XFL three years ago. However, the XFL's week 2 averaged 655,000 viewers. On ESPN, ESPN2, and FX, which was more than double the number of people who watched live, one of the reasons Greg Norman's league, which may not survive another two years, did so poorly was that many prime CW affiliates skipped coverage of live golf. Despite the rocky start, Perry Sook, CEO of CW's parent company Nexstar, said on an earnings call earlier this week that he was pleased with Live's debut. Those numbers exceeded our expectations, and most importantly, the affiliates and our own stations were overjoyed, he told The Hollywood Reporter. I know that our affiliates and CW affiliates in the top 10 markets generated roughly three times the amount of money that the network generated for the first outing. And so it's selling very well. And you know, I think it'll continue to grow as we get deeper into the season and more involved. The first season, which consisted of eight events, was broadcasted on YouTube. Live expected a television deal, even if it was only on the CW, to be a huge success. Getting a deal on television for the first event of their 14 event schedule was a big step that needed to be taken, but was it even worth it? If this trend continues, Live may become extinct much sooner than expected. The money will eventually run out, and they will require items such as this TV contract. If it fails, they could be in serious trouble. For comparison, the Genesis Invitational on the PGA Tour the week before drew a 1.8 rating for Saturday's third round, according to Sports Media Watch. Despite the fact that there was no competing live event and Tiger Woods was playing in the Genesis, his first non-major PGA event in years, the difference in rating is astounding. Ian Poulter was slammed for joining Live Golf. Live Golf required the television deal in part because the league is regarded as inferior. It's not as good as the PGA Tour, and many consider those who defected to be traitors. Rating for the Honda Classic, which took place this past weekend on the PGA Tour, were not immediately available. The Arnold Palmer Invitational was a secondary event for the PGA, and many of the biggest names sitting out in preparation for this week's Arnold Palmer Invitational. Sung J M and Shane Lowry were the biggest names who participated this past weekend, with veteran Chris Kirk walking away with the win. Live has marketed itself as golf but louder, a format similar to the PGA but with smaller fields, no cuts, teams, and rules quirks not found on traditional golf tours. Live golf employs a shotgun start, which means that all golfers teed off at the same time at different holes, as opposed to the PGA Tour's traditional stagger start. So far, this has not translated into meaningful viewership. Given the PGA Tour's weak field over the weekend, Live had a real chance to draw in viewers, and blew it spectacularly. That reputation isn't doing well, and it's certainly not helping the players on Live. Ian Poulter allegedly received a barrage of abuse for his decision. Poulter admitted to Golf WRX that he ate stress foods to cope with everything. Those sarnies covered in HP sauce were great, delicious, as were all the chocolate and everything on a daily basis, but I was feeling awful, slovenly, and it was clearly not a pleasant situation. I'd never admit to stress eating, but who knows how the mind works. I was getting ridiculous abuse, so it was a difficult time. He also credited the Full Swing documentary with helping to improve his public image. After the first seven or eight months of having the same opinion shouted at me, I was concerned about how it would be received, but the response has taken me by surprise. I mean, scrolling through the messages, it's been one positive thing after another since it was released 10 days ago. The polar opposite of what I've grown accustomed to. That's not great and looks terrible compared to what the PGA Tour did. Despite a weak field, the Tour's Honda Classic also crushed live golf. 
According to ESPN, the Honda Classic drew an average of 593,000 viewers on the Golf Channel and an approximately 2 million viewers on NBC on Saturday and Sunday. Chris Kirk won the Honda Classic despite the fact that no one in the top 17 of the official World Golf rankings was in the field. The Genesis Invitational, which was a designated event and featured Tiger Woods for the first time in seven months, drew 3.12 million viewers on CBS and a 2.1 household rating during the final round. Despite the poor performance, Nexstar CEO Perry Sook was pleased with the results. The CW's parent company is Nexstar, which struck a deal with the contentious Saudi-backed golf league after the first season was streamed for free on YouTube. This month, Live Golf will host its second and third tournaments of the season, the first in Tucson, Arizona on March 17th, and the second in Orlando, Florida on March 31st. Those competitions take place just before the Players' Championship and the Masters, respectively. Watson Reed said they expected no live PGA tensions at Masters. Former Masters champion Bubba Watson and Patrick Reed says they do not expect awkward moments in tension when Live Golf and PGA Tour players meet at next week's Masters. Speaking ahead of this week's Live Golf League event at Orlando, they and four-time major winner Brooks Kepka said the world's top players plan on routine situations at the year's first major at Augusta National despite the ongoing feud. The Saudi-backed Live Series lured several big names from the PGA, prompting the PGA to ban those who jumped to the Rebel Series for a record $25 million purses and 54-hole events. While a court battle is set to play out in 2024, major tournaments have not restricted qualifying, marking them the only stage where live and PGA players will face each other. Watson says he's trying to beat them all, while Reed said there's no battle for tour top honor, just the fight for the green jacket symbolic of the master's supremacy. The most important details in this text are that the storylines will be live versus PGA Tour, and the top players in the world are playing against each other no matter where they come from. Additionally, Brooks Kepka is still eligible for the Masters, thanks to his most recent major triumph at the 2019 PGA Championship, and that he often spends time with PGA major winners like Justin Thomas and Rory McIlroy in their homes in Jupiter, Florida. McIlroy has been a major supporter of the PGA Tour and the changes it has made to create more top-level events for bigger purses, and that opposing sides of a business decision will not mean animosity at Augusta. Full Swing sought to highlight the current state of golf, with the PGA Tour live debate taking center stage. Many are likely even more upset with the Rebel Tour and its players, but it appears that some have softened and reached out to Poulter, one of live golf's most vocal supporters. If the TV deal fails and the league folds, the golfers who participated will not be forgotten, but they may be forgiven by the general public. What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comments section. If you enjoyed today's video and found it interesting, then make sure to leave us a thumbs up and do not forget to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to be up to date with the latest content as soon as it's uploaded. Thanks for watching. See you again soon in another video.